This was originally going to be a series of tweets, but I had a lot to say, so I made a video instead on my thoughts on Octopath Traveler. At the time of recording, I'm about 40 hours in, and I've completed all the Chapter 3 so far, and I've only beaten one Chapter 4 so far, being Hanitz, my first character, but there won't be any real spoilers in this video, and the gameplay is essentially just going to be some b-roll. So here's what I like about the game, the overall aesthetic. I love the pixelated art style, the lighting effects, the particle effects that appear for each action during combat, the slow motion and zoom effect that appear when you break an enemy, the depth of field effect blurring objects in the foreground and background. I know it's been said probably a million times, but it'd be great if the SNES Final Fantasy games were remade using this rendering engine. And the music, I could gush about it for hours, which I won't do here, but what I will say is that it's one of those soundtracks where literally every single song is really good. The world. This game has a lot of towns in it. Usually towns are boring in RPGs, but I like it a lot. Even though a lot of assets are reused, it makes the world feel more lived in. The battle system. I really like the battle system. The boost system is a simpler version of the Braven default system from Bravely Default, and the break system makes it so that you actually have to pay attention and experiment with different attack types and plan your party out in advance so that you cover everything. In addition, this game does not hold your hand and constantly interrupt battles with tutorials, unlike the last Switch JRPG I played. The streamlined equipment screen and multi-classing. It's really simple to equip your party, which is refreshing. You got your job, secondary job, clothes, passive buffs. That's all you need. And pro tip for those who haven't started the game yet, or haven't gotten very far, always multi-class. Your stats always increase with a secondary class. The characters. Every playable character feels unique, and they're all very likable people. In the last Switch RPG I played, I couldn't stand the main character for a goddamn second. So this is a welcome change. Not every story is as compelling as some of the others, but different stories will resonate with different people. Primrose's and Olberic's story were the most interesting to me personally, and the other characters, I didn't care too much what happened next, but I did like the characters a lot, and was invested in each chapter while it was happening. Most of the other characters' stories is really just, I'm going to travel the world with no real direction. Or if you're Therian, you're basically on a Legend of Zelda quest, collect these red, blue, and green shiny things, and I think Ophelia is in the plot to Dark Souls, traveling the world lighting bonfires. The individual stories are pretty cliche, but not every video game needs to be Mass Effect or Citizen Kane, you know? And it's better to have a basic story than a shitty ass one. Plus, some of the stories start out cliche, but then take unexpected turns later, and because they started out so cliche, it often subverts your expectation of what's going to happen next and leads to a genuine surprise. Also, conversations and cutscenes don't last way too long. <coughs> and also, for a JRPG, the voice acting is pretty good and not really, 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 really cringy. And in combat, even with multiclassing, every character still feels unique with different stat spreads and abilities unique to only them. Hana and Ulbrick are good physical attackers. Hanet has animal buddies for weakness coverage. Ulbrick tanks physical damage like your mom's pussy. Cyrus does crap tons of magic damage. Ophelia is the best healer, especially early on. Primrose must work at the car wash, cause she sure is good at buffs. Therian steals the shit out of everything, both in and out of battle. Tressa gets you lots of cash. And Alfin is good at riding the bench. I'm just kidding, he's got a big range of abilities as long as you have the items, which the game constantly gives you for free. So in short, before I talk about some of the negative aspects, I really like this game, and I'm looking forward to finishing the rest of the stories, and I hope Octopath gets a sequel in the next couple of years. Now for the stuff that I'm not such a huge fan of. I do really like this game, but it does have some glaring flaws. But first, a lot of people are saying, that the game is pretty formulaic. Almost every chapter follows the same pattern of go to a town, talk to people, use path action, go through a pretty linear dungeon, and fight a boss. However, with unique scenarios happening in every chapter, and 32 chapters to go through, I personally don't mind having a rigid structure. I'd say it's less formulaic, more familiarity. 
Though I know some people will disagree and they'll prefer more variety. Now the biggest thing I don't like about it is the forced level grinding. It really baffles me because, at least for me, all the chapter 1's scale in level with your party, but then there was a huge gap in finishing all the chapter 1's and starting any of the chapter 2's. I don't really know why I expected something different from the same people who made Bravely Default, and I don't want to spoil too much from that game for those who haven't played it, but literally the last third of that game is just level grinding with minimal new content. So of course Octopath has forced level grinding in order to progress normally. When I finished all the chapter 1's, Hanit, my first character who was locked to the party, was level 17, and everyone else was around level 11 because I switched my party up a lot. But then the lowest level chapter 2 was level 21, so I just had to grind levels for about 5 hours before I could progress at all. Isn't this game supposed to be similar to old school JRPGs like Final Fantasy VI? You know, a game that had literally zero mandatory level grinding to progress and every second of gameplay felt important and was about 20-25 to 25 hours of JRPG goodness? I prefer a shorter game with no filler for a tighter and better overall experience rather than one that's padded out for the sake of length. I tried to progress anyway without grinding levels and my party got wiped in two turns in the first regular battle in the dungeon, so it really is mandatory. And on top of that, your inactive party members earn zero experience and zero job points from battles, which results in your levels being all over the place. Apparently while you're out fighting, they're spending all their time at the pub getting wasted as fuck instead of doing push-ups or working the shake weight or something. I could understand inactive party members getting less experience or they get some experience points but no job points, but to get zero of both in an already pretty grindy game just further compounds the problem. Your options are either to A, grind a bunch of levels between the chapters to progress if you want to switch your party up a lot, or B, use the same three characters for the whole game, with your fourth being whosever story you're in, and having to grind less, but still some. And what's worse, even after all that grinding, depending on your party members, you may have barely any money like I did. Each piece of equipment costs way too much relative to how much money you make each battle. If you don't have Tressa in your party taking cash from literal dead bodies, you're going to be pretty broke in the early game. But to be fair, a lot of the side quests do give you a lot of money if you can figure them out, but some of them are kind of cryptic. And before anyone says anything about it, I know about the dancer skill, Bewildering Grace, that can increase your experience with job points or money, but it's completely random as to whether or not it works, and most of the time it just ends up poisoning my whole party, so you know that's fun. And there's the fat cats that show up randomly, and if you can beat them they give you multiple levels worth of experience, but lots of times they just run away on turn one. And that's the thing, I shouldn't have to do all these things in order to progress the game normally. As much as I like to shit all over Xenoblade 2, at least that game didn't waste your time with forced grinding. No, that game just found other ways to waste your time. There is less level grinding later in the game, but there is still some, and mandatory level grinding just has no place in games, period. Also, Octopath's economy is designed in such a way that the game assumes you're going to use Therion to steal everything that's not nailed down, and even some things that are nailed down. So if he's not in your party at all times, then you're putting yourself into a big item deficit. Also, I hate those stupid purple chests. Only Therion can open them. Even if you multiclass someone else into a thief, they still can't open the chest. Only Therion can. It's so annoying to walk around a dungeon to a corner where a chest would be, only to find the exclusive purple chest and not be able to open it because you don't have Therion in the party. And you can't just switch them in real quick and then switch them back out. You can only change party members in the bars in the town. So in short, if you haven't started the game yet, and you're not sure who to pick, I recommend either picking Tressa or Therion. In Octopath, it feels like if you're not constantly optimizing your play, you're going to be at a significant disadvantage. And one last thing I thought was kind of odd, is that the 8 stories are written as if only the main character for that chapter is present, and not the whole party, and it creates this huge disconnect between story and gameplay. This isn't an RPG, in which there are 8 intersecting stories. Instead, there are 8 separate stories starring one person, 
but you get to use some of the other characters in combat if you want. Not to spoil anything, but at multiple points in the story, events unfold that would not happen that way if the other party members were standing right there. And it usually involves boss fights. So often, you'll beat a boss with a four member party, and then something will happen only involving the main character of that story, so only they will appear on screen. But then immediately afterwards, you'll get a travel banter conversation in which two of the party members will talk to each other as if they were both there. It's kind of jarring, especially because in any regular circumstances, a lot of these characters just would not team up and it's just not explained why they're traveling together. But again, after all that rambling, although it's far from perfect, I really, really like Octopath Traveler. But it goes along with how I feel about a lot of Switch games that I've played. These games have ranged from meh, to I to pretty good, to really good, to dang near masterpieces. But I think that a lot of them have set a good foundation, and I hope that the developers of each one builds upon the foundation they've set to make a sequel to these games in a couple years that is something truly spectacular.